and thank you so much for joining us here today in True North Square. I'm Sarah Orleski from the Winnipeg Jets, and I feel very <laughs> and I feel very privileged to be here on this special day as we celebrate one of the most iconic players to ever don a Winnipeg Jets jersey, Dale Howarchuk. I'd like to begin today by wishing a very warm welcome to his family, friends, and many former teammates. From the first time that he put on a pair of skates, Dale and hockey were synonymous with each other. A prodigy on the ice, he would put his stamp on the sport both before and after his years in Winnipeg. But his connection to this team this city and these fans would remain everlasting and we know that his legacy will continue to live on. Selected first overall by the Jets in 1981, Dale would become a legendary captain of the team and over his nine seasons here led the team in scoring each season, amassing an impressive 929 total points over 713 games. Dale was taken from us far too soon, and when he passed in August of 2020, I remember being struck by the heartfelt tributes to him, because they were not just about his play and impact on the ice, as impressive as his offensive skill and Hall of Fame career obviously was. But many equally focused on the type of person he was. Humble, kind, an approachable superstar who in more recent years proved to be the perfect person to help bridge the gap between Winnipeg Jets past and present. A proud member of the alumni, and Jets Hall of Fame, and the perfect choice to be honored in this way here today. Now to begin things this evening, please help me welcome a former Winnipeg Jet and the current Senior Vice President of Hockey Operations for the NHL, Chris King. I too am privileged to be here representing the NHL, our 31 other club member teams, uh, com Commissioner Mr. Gary Bettman, Deputy Commissioner Bill Daly, to honor a player and a person that universally was admired by all in the game. And for me personally, you don't have to twist my arm to come back to Winnipeg, a city that was so important to me in my career. Thanks. I, I spent four years here playing for a team that did things the right way. And thank you, Mark, for having me here. Uh, we, as alumni and the guys that are here today, truly love Dale, and we know that he was very important to all of us. Like many of them here and some that you'll listen to later, I never had the privilege of playing with Dale in the National Hockey League. But for some unknown reason, in 2016, I got a call from Dale asking me to play in the uh, Jet Oiler outdoor alumni game. And I think I was his first call. And then when I got here, I couldn't quite understand why I was on a line with him and Timo Solani. But for those that remember, we actually had a pretty good game that day. And uh, unfortunately, Paul, our line kind of beat a pretty stacked Edmonton Oilers team that you were on so you don't have to share a locker room with with Dale to understand what kind of great player and leader he was his stats and accomplishments in the game spoke for themselves his incredible skill level and his his work ethic was unequaled 
when your best player and your captain prepares and plays that way, teammates naturally follow. And they did that here in Winnipeg, and they did that on the teams that Dale played through in his career. A player's impact on a community is kind of, it's really remembered and by how he's received by his team and the people where he plays. And when you think about Dale, you think about respect. He was respected by the opposition, the coaches, the other players. As Craig Heisinger says, who had a very special kind of big brother, little brother, and we know which one Zinger was, uh, relationship. He was talking about my years earlier, so I had to get a shot at him. <laughs> Dale was adored by the Jets staff. And it's because of the way he treated them. He treated them all like family. And talking to the players that are here today that played with him, he was loved. And he was loved by you, the fans, the fans here in Winnipeg. I know, I know to you, he wasn't just your captain. He was one of you. He loved playing for the Jets, and he loved saying he was from Winnipeg, making it his home. The time and effort that he and Crystal put in this community was incredible. The amount of charity work they did, and still do, and the tournaments that he does, whether hockey or golf, that bear his name, whether it's more recently with the True North Foundation, Dale and his family wanted to continue to do the good work. And with Andrew Jackson, Howard Chuck's strong initiative will ensure that his, his, what he adored and what he loved to do was to give back to people will continue and live on. I want to thank the family especially Crystal and Eric, Ben and Alexis, for allowing me to be part of the Howard Chuck Strong family. It's something that's very important to me and something that I'm very proud of. Again, to Mark, thank you very much. The Winnipeg Jets, like better than any other team, do things right. They treat their alumni so well. It's such a great group of guys that love to get back. And thank you for allowing all these guys to come back and for this celebration. The last time we were together was a little tougher. This really, truly is a celebration of somebody that's very important and very important to all of us. When I look at this statue, I remember a legend, a guy that was loved and admired both on and off the ice. You'll look at probably one of the greatest Jets of all time. To me, I'll remember the person that was probably one of the best people I've ever met in the game. Enjoy the rest of the festivities. And I'm sure Gary and Coley won't mind if I wish the Jets the best of luck this year. I am an alumni. Thank you, Chris. Dale's present presence wasn't just felt in the NHL, but on the international stage as well. He proudly represented Canada numerous times, including twice at the Canada Cup, which in 1987 was the scene of one of the greatest highlights of his career, as he played a key role in one of the most iconic goals in Canadian hockey history. Please welcome Dale's Canada Cup teammate and fellow Hockey Hall of Fame member, Paul Coffey. Thank you, and uh, Chris, thank you. It was uh, on the itinerary that each guy got to speak for three minutes only. King or you ran over, so I guess I get about 10 seconds. Thanks for that. And the other thing I can't figure out, the outdoor game that we played here, the Oilers against Winnipeg, yes, the best team did win, and yes, we couldn't figure out either why you were playing with Dale and Timu. It's, uh, I got to tell you what, you know, Mark sent me a note about a month ago, three week, weeks ago, and asked me if I'd participate in this. And my wife had happened to be sitting beside me, and I went, done, in. She goes, how come you replied to him so fast? You don't reply to me that fast. And that's just kind of the way it is, which is the same reason why the Edmonton Oilers, uh, led by our greatest player, Wayne Gretzky, couldn't wait to get here and play in that outdoor game in Winnipeg. You know, coming in here today, Kinger talked about it a lot, how they do things right, how Mark and company just seem to do it. And then 
to see all the alumni here is, uh, is, is great. It's intimidating, but uh, you know some things don't change. I went up and introduced myself, said hello to Tim Waters, and he wouldn't let me move. It's kind of like he was hooking me and wouldn't let me buy him. But uh, it's great to see everybody. There's a bunch of guys I haven't had a chance to see yet, but uh, fantastic. I first saw I first saw Dale play in 1981 uh, Memorial Cup in Windsor, Ontario. My old junior team, the Kitchener Rangers, were playing. At that point, it was three teams: Kitchener. Uh, Victoria and the Cornwall uh, team led by Dale. I was sitting up in the crowd and the Victoria team was losing 8-1. And I said to Barry Fraser, our scout, because the Oilers that year had the eighth overall pick. And I said, Barry, who are we taking? He says, oh, we're taking that kid down there. I said, Howard check? He goes, no, we ain't getting him. He's going first overall. We're taking the goalie. I said, the goalie? He just let in eight goals, and I'm not much known for my defense. I think we need a better goalie than that. Anyway, the goalie ended up being Grant Fear, and uh, and, the, and the rest is kind of history. And, you know, when you think of the Winnipeg Jets, led by Dale and all the great players that play with them, and I do not apologize for this, but the only reason you guys didn't win a Stanley Cup was probably because you were playing the Oilers. And I will say, on behalf of myself and the whole Oiler organization, you guys made us a better team because we knew coming into the arena, as it was called, we had to bring our best. And Dale was uh, led, led, the, uh, led the brigade times 10 every night. You know, Sarah talked a little bit earlier about internationally. And one thing to play against Dale, you know how good he was and you have your scouting reports, not like they are now, but you know what to watch for. But you do not appreciate how great a player and how great a teammate he is unless you get a chance to play with him. That 1987 Canada Cup was unbelievable. For us that are old enough here to remember it, uh, the 1987, it went three games, 6-5, 6-5, 6-5. Dale came to a team that had Wayne, had Mark, had Mario, had Brent Sutter, Gilmore, and of course Howard Chuck, who could play with any of those guys any single time, but had to find his niche in the lineup. The last game, we were down 3 nothing before Cops Coliseum and Hamilton was even full. Mike Keenan, who's usually known for pulling his goalie, kept Grant Fuhr in, sat, uh, sat Wayne for a few shifts, sat Mario for a few shifts, come up with a line, Brian Propp, Dale Howardchuk, and Rick Tockett. And those guys, and anybody will tell you on that team, saved that game for us, got the game back where it belonged, until Wayne and company took it over at the end. But I can't help but think of the last play of the game. Not the last play, there was two or three minutes left. And I actually chuckle about it because scores tied 5-5, face-offs in our zone. The two defensemen on the ice are Paul Coffey and Larry Murphy, two really offensive guys. That'll never happen in today's game. They'd be different. We had Mark Messier sitting on the bench, Brent Sutter sitting on the bench, two really good face-off men. Keenan goes, Gretzky, Lemieux, Howardchuk. Wayne hops over the boards, looks back. He says, I'm not taking the draw. Mario looks back at Dale, he goes in his French accent, it's not my side. So Dale says, I guess I got to take the draw. Typical Dale Howard truck over the side of his mouth, kind of says to Mario, I'm going to tie the guy up. You come in and tip it. The rest is history. And, you know, for me to get a chance to play with Dale, and Wayne will tell you the same thing, and everybody, I wasn't privy like the, the alumni guys here to live day and day with him, but it was pretty special. But, um, I feel that I feel that Dale's greatest accomplishment, sorry, is marrying Crystal. A beautiful, a beautiful, a beautiful Winnipeg girl that allowed him to keep his roots in this city and always be a part of Winnipeg. Crystal and Dale raised three, three beautiful kids: Eric, Ben, Alexi, I know Eleanor, and. Uh, to dad, every, everybody's here tonight, Dana and Cole, but it's just incredible. Crystal, where are you? You know how I feel about you. But Dale, Dale is so proud of you, Doug, or uh, sorry, the parents, kids, the whole bit, and what you've meant, and you've allowed him to keep his roots in Winnipeg. There's three hockey players that I know of, maybe more, LA seems to overdo it, that have statues in front of the arena. One is Mario, one is Wayne, and we got Dale here tonight. I'm going to tell you one thing. This guy takes a back seat to nobody. Once again, I'm happy to be here and honored. Thank you.
Thank you, Paul. As we all know in sports, there are some teammates that just come and go. And then there are others that are close friends for life. That was certainly the case for Dale and our next speaker. Please welcome current Jets associate coach, Scott Arneal. Thanks, Sarah. Um, to, first of all, to Crystal, Eric, Ben, Alexa, Mr. and Mrs. Howard, Chuck, Dana, all the family, a lot of you I haven't seen since, uh, since the wedding a long time ago. Um, thank you for having me here today to be a part of this, to be able to speak of some times that I've had that are so memorable. I first met Dale in a swimming pool in a hotel in Cornwall when we were both drafted there when we were 16, 17 years old. We became friends there and it obviously lasted a lifetime. It meant an awful lot to me. Um, I knew then, as our teammates in Cornwall, we won two Memorial Cups. We knew we had a star teammate on, on, on our team at the time. He was a special player, he was a special person, and he meant an awful lot to our teammates in Cornwall at that time. Was fortunate to get drafted here to Winnipeg. We both came here, 1-2 in 1981, to continue our friendship, to continue to play together. And, you know, obviously, it's where Dale became the star that he was. And, you know, he's, it, the, he grew here as a, as a hockey player. He grew here as a, as a husband, as a father. He loved Winnipeg. He loved playing here. And it meant so much to him. On behalf of all the alumni here today, everybody has their stories about Dale. We all remember great times that we spent with him. Great stories. Great things that happened in the games themselves and we'll have those with us for our lifetime. Had a great, you know, talking to Dale near the end, lots. He wanted me to make sure, because we had talked about this, for all you guys to be here today, to be a part of this, is very special for him. And I know to Crystal's family as well. Um, near the end, we were talking, and Dale said, Arnie, you won't believe it, I just got a call from Mark Chipman and Craig Heisinger. They said they're gonna, they wanted to make a statue of me outside the arena. And I said, wow, that's amazing. And he goes, I don't know, I can't believe it. And so I said to him, I said, well, what's your thoughts? Like, if you, how do you want it to, what do you want it to look like? I said, do you want to have your arms up in the air scoring a goal? Do you want to be shooting the puck, or do you want to be in a position passing it? And Dale says, no, I'd like to have it be me back-checking. <laughs> and he says, but I mentioned it to Zinger, and Zinger said they can't find any video or any pictures anywhere of me back-checking. And that's Dale. That's how he approached all this. That's how we approached every day. But, you know, he meant an awful lot to all of us. And I do know this, that that statue will be here, and whether you're a fan, whether you're family, whether you're a teammate. When you come by and look at this statue, remember those great times that you had with him. Great times on the ice, as a fan, great times watching him in live or on TV. For family, all the moments that you had to spend with him. Because that's what he'd want. He'd want you to remember all the great things about him. I just want to say to you all there, all of Winnipeg, he loved this city, he loved this province. He made it home, and he's special to all of us. So thank you for having me here today. Thanks. Thank you, Scott. Dale continued to make an impact in hockey long after he retired, moving behind the bench and coaching a new generation of players. When asked why, he pointed to his desire to give back. So many people had helped him along the way, and now he wanted to do the same. One of those players who benefited from him would go on 
to become the Winnipeg Jets' first draft pick in 2011. Please welcome to the stage, Mark Shifley. So the first time I ever met Dale, um, I was playing in a, a Junior A tournament in Huntsville and uh, my rights were a few weeks before traded to Barry where he was coaching and uh, um, he came and watched the last game. I was committed to Cornell, I was going to go college and then he asked if me and my mom would stop by on the, on the way home to meet with them, talk to him and the GM and the owner and just pick my brain a little bit. So you know, we stopped into the Barry Molson Center and within five minutes I knew he was the guy I wanted to play for. You know, he was, you know, I, I could just tell the love, the passion, you know, it just came out of him and when he spoke, I just know how genuine he was and it made my decision really easy and, you know, it was the best decision I ever made to come play for, for Barry and, and Dale. Um, you know, I was very lucky to, to have him as a coach. He was the best coach I've ever had, but he was an even better human. Um, he was one of those guys that no matter who was around him, whether it was family, whether it was friends, whether it was players, you know, whether it was staff, he was just, he could tell he just cared. He cared, you know, more and more than, you know, anyone could ever know. And, you know, I was very lucky to be one of those guys that he cared about. And, you know, what, a, what, a, what an honor it is to, to be, you know, speaking in front of his family, his friends, his, his ex-teammates, you know, all of, all of you fans. Um, you know, it's a true honor to, to be able to speak at, at this event, so thank you very much. Um, you know, but, but this statue, like what a reminder it is for me as a, you know, as a guy that played for Dale. Um, you know, I drive down Hargrave every single day to the rink. Um, so every day I get to stop at this stoplight and I get to look at this statue and remember all the lessons that he taught me. I get to remember, you know, all the, all the fun stories that we had of winning games, losing games, you know, learning lessons, him yelling at me for not back checking, which, no, which now I know why. <laughs> Um, and now I get to look at this statue and, and think about him and think about that he's, you know, he's up in heaven looking down on me. And I get to go to the rink and go with that love and that passion that he instilled in me when I was 17 years old. And, um, you know, what an amazing honor. And all I can say is thank you, Dale. Thank you, Mark. As much as Dale loved hockey, as we've heard, he certainly loved his family even more. And we see so many of them here today. Please welcome to the stage to speak on behalf of the Howard Chucks, Dale's wife, Crystal. Thank you. <clears throat> it's wonderful to be back here in Winnipeg. Dale was notified of this great honor shortly before he passed. He was extremely humbled and honored. It was an emotional day. Thanks to the Jets organization, particularly Mark Chipman and Craig Heisinger for calling him that day. Dale felt privileged to play in the NHL, and he felt privileged to coach the Barry Colts. He was thankful for every day given to him doing what he loved. He loved the people of Winnipeg. He loved the city. He loved the province. He even liked the winters and the lo he loved the summers. He built a cottage on the lake, and he told me he always felt Winnipeg was his home. He, Dale was a leader, and he was a teacher. He was always making an impact. He led with a purpose. He didn't make excuses. He didn't criticize. He didn't complain, except when he had to help me move furniture. He didn't like to do that. But he inspired us all to be better people. Everyone loved to be around him. He was special. The talent that we saw on the ice also shone through his heart. He was generous with his time. He supported many charities, he loved his fans, and as much as he gave to them, he felt that they gave back to him. He gave our family a beautiful life. 
he made a difference in the lives of many. And this is why we will not forget him. This statue is a testament to the giving life he lived. Thank you to everyone involved in making this statue a reality. Thank you to the artist, Eric Bloom, all the other artists. Thank you to the Jets organization, the city, the people of this wonderful province, all the alumni, all of his fans, all of his friends, uh, teammates. As you remember Dale today, our family will always remember you, and now he is home again here in Winnipeg. Thank you. Finally, as we get ready to unveil the statue shortly, we turn things over to the Executive Chairman of the Winnipeg Jets, Mark Chipman. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, this turnout is, I guess, what we expected. Um, it's been uh, really one of the great honors of my life to be a part of the process that led to the creation of the magnificent statue we're going to unveil momentarily. As has been mentioned, I was equally honored to, to join Zinger uh, in telling Dale shortly before his passing that this day would come. And what a beautiful day we have been given. Um, Kinger, thanks for being here. Paul, um, I know how how proud he was of his friendship with you. Arnie, nobody knew him better. And Scheif, um, well done. Um, I know how much he loved you all. Um, Crystal, wow. Um, that, was, that was lovely. And um, thank you. I know you're joined, as, as we've said, uh, with your son Eric and, and Ben's here and, and Dale's mother and father, Eleanor and Ed his sister Dana, together with many additional friends and family that have traveled far and wide to celebrate this day. So thank you all so much for being here. Um, now, as you can imagine, a project like this requires the collaboration of a number of very talented and passionate people, including the incredible artist and sculptor whom we entrusted this project to, Mr. Eric Blom. You should know Eric's I'll give you a chance to do that in a sec. But you should know that Eric's extensive work includes sculptures of Wayne Gretzky and Michael Jordan. We believe that Dale and his family deserve the very best, and that's exactly what we found in Eric. I was fortunate to travel to Eric's home in Woodstock, Illinois this past summer and witness firsthand the remarkable skill, care, and passion that Eric and his team put into this project. Eric and his associate Grant Patterson drove the statue here last weekend and have overseen its installation. They are here today along with Eric's wife Charlotte and I would ask if they could just quickly stand and, and be acknowledged with a warm Manitoba welcome. This project uh, was led by two invaluable members of our True North team, Vice President of Marketing, Dorian Morphy, and our Director of Design Services, Josh Dudich. Both Dorian and Josh immediately understood the magnitude of this undertaking and put their heart and soul into every aspect of it, including the selection of Eric and the engagement of the Howard Truck family in selecting the image that the statue depicts. Thank you very much, guys. And I, uh, 
I would, I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge the local companies that made this day a reality, including our project managers, PCL, Architecture 49 for the design of the pedestal, our engineers, Crozier, Kilgore, and suppliers, Abesco, Nortec, Lead Masonry, and Gillis Quarries. Thank you all. When, when Dale passed on August 18, 2020, the Winnipeg Jets offered the following words. Dale Howarchuk put the Winnipeg Jets Hockey Club on the map the day he arrived in our city in 1981, and his love for our community and remarkable Hall of Fame career will keep it there for many generations to come. Our players, alumni, and fans will forever be inspired by his passion for the game and his commitment to his team. We could think of no better way to describe Dale today and so we've inscribed those very words on the plaque which will forever be a part of this statue. On a personal note, and I know I speak for Chevy and Zinger, we will always be grateful for the way in which Dale embraced us and for the role he played in bridging the rich history of the Winnipeg Jets to our organization as no one else could have done. Prior to the Heritage Classic in 2016, I reached out to Wayne Gretzky to see if he'd be interested in participating in the alumni game. I vividly recall his first words, only if Dale is a part of this. When I assured Wayne that he was, I think we, uh, we had the makings for what I believe was the greatest alumni game in NHL history. And this is kind of cool. I, just a few weeks ago, I had occasion to visit the Rogers Center in Edmonton, and I was shown the photograph of Dale and Wayne from that event. It hangs prominently in the Oilers locker room, and I'm told it's the only image of a non-Oiler non -oiler anywhere in that building. So um, I mentioned uh, a moment ago that our, our team collaborated with Eric and the Howard Chuck family to determine what the statue should convey. Dynamic, skillful, graceful, and aspirational. Always reaching for more became the guiding virtues. Many images were considered, but from the beginning, we felt it was essential that Dale's family made the final decision. We're thrilled with their choice, and I'm confident you will agree that it reflects all of those qualities. What you may not notice, at least not right away, other than the fact that Dale is pointed directly at Canada Life Centre, he's also aligned with a position on the compass known as True North. This term not only serves as the name of our organization, it does so because we believe it to be a metaphor for all of the inarguable, time-tested principles that guide us in the enormous responsibility of stewarding the Winnipeg Jets Hockey Club. I believe Dale embodied those very same principles and this statue can now be a constant reminder to all of us at True North that one's legacy is not defined solely by the skill they might possess. Rather, and as you've heard from everyone on this stage this afternoon, it is ultimately determined by the measure in which you strive mightily and the extent to which you sacrifice for the well-being of your family, your friends, your teammates and your community. That is who Dale Harrowchuk was. Now joining us today are many Jets and NHL alumni, friends of the organization and special guests. Unfortunately, too many to list individually. One person I would like to acknowledge, however, is Barry Shankro and his wife, Rena, without whom the Winnipeg Jets would not have made the leap from the WHA to the NHL 43 years ago, and whose general manager, John Ferguson would not have had the opportunity to draft Dale two years later in 1981. Barry and Rena, we're thrilled that you could be with us today. So in addition to Paul Coffey and Scott O'Neill, who just heard from, we are also deeply honoured to be joined by former teammates Dave Ellett, Randy Carlisle, Dave Babich, Paul McLean, Lori Boschman, Lucien Delbois, Jim Kite, Tim Waters, Brian Mullen, Ray Newfeld, Jimmy Mann, Randy Gillen, and Jordy Douglas. And, and 
on the occasion of the 50th anniversary of the historical Canada-Russia series of 1972. We are especially thrilled to also welcome a member of that team back to Winnipeg where he played his final two seasons alongside Dale, a winner of eight Stanley Cups as a player, two more as a GM, and one of the kindest men I've ever met in the game of hockey, Mr. Serge Savard. Um, we could think of no better way to unveil Dale's statue than to ask the teammates he loves so dearly to do that for us. So if I could ask those 16 individuals that I just welcomed to please approach the statue um, as we prepare to unveil it. And once you're all in place, I'll give you the cue to remove the cover. Please unveil the statue. Thank you, everybody.